Welcome to Jot Form. My name is George, and today I'm going to show you how to use the spreadsheet widget on our Jot Form. This way, you can display data on tables. So let's go jump over to our dashboard right now. This is our Jot Form dashboard. Let's get started by adding a brand new form. So let's go ahead and click on Create a Form. And in this case, we'll select Scratch just to show you this demo. We're going to select classic form. And in this way, it's going to open us the job form builder. So let's go ahead and open up form elements. And to head on over to our spreadsheet widget, we're gonna head on over to the widgets tab. And in this case, we're gonna search for spreadsheet. Here we go, here's the spreadsheet. I just clicked on it and it, put it, it, it puts it in our form. This way, it's going to open up the widget settings. Now, there's two settings on this widget. We have the widget settings, which is this one right here, and there's also the properties for them. Let's get started with the widget settings. So in this case, we have a simple spreadsheet that's two columns and two rows. Now, we can change these by changing our number here on our settings. So for example, we have two and we might need 10, okay? So now it gives us 10 rows. But what if we need more columns? Well, there's the second option here that we can select, for example, four, in case we need four. Now it looks kind of smush because it's taking advantage of the letter that we have here. But if we add content to it, it's gonna stretch it. But we can also change these column labels. So right now it's A, B, C, D, but what if we want to change this? Let's just say that we want to use our spreadsheet to display a pricing table, for example. Well, we can change these names. So for example, by default, it's A, B, C, D, but what if we want to change it to, for example, bronze? The next one we'll call it silver. The next one will be gold. And the next one will be platinum. Okay, just like that, we added names to our columns right here, instead of displaying A, B, C, D. That helps us if we want to use this to display a pricing table, or we want to display some kind of data that's relevant and it's not used by ABCD. Well, this helps us out in this sense. Now let's go ahead and remove these just for now because the next step is the values. We can input values into these or we can let users um, type in values if we like. So in this case, let's add values to this. Now each value corresponds to, for example, if I say A1, the, the data is gonna be filled inside of one. So for example, if we were to use this for a pricing table, we could say, for example, 10 emails, right? So that's what's included in this. Um, again, if we want to do row A and two, so we would say A2, and we would say also, for example, two sub accounts. Okay, and now it's added there. Um, this way, we're able to view. Now, heads up, if we change the column labels, we are still going to use the ABCD form. So even if these are changed to bronze, silver, gold, like we saw in the example, we're still going to use this format to fill in the tables. Now there's also, we can also add uh, formulas inside of here. So for example, we have this example right here, which is on the row, on the column, on the sheet, we're gonna say that B1, it's gonna be equal A1 plus A2. It's gonna give us the total on the row B B1, okay? Let's go ahead and test this. So let's go into preview form. There we go. So as we mentioned, the row A1 and A2 will be the total on B1. So for example, if I say five and five, it gives us a total of 10. Let's go ahead and go back, widget settings. So remember, B1 was going to give us our total of A1 and A2. So if you wanna change this to for example, give us a total on, I don't know, C1. There we go, it moved it to C1. That's gonna give us a total over here. And if you want to give the total to other rows, well, we just changed these. Now let's go ahead and remove it for now. And the next option that we have is read only if we want to activate it. If we don't have activated this, this is what's going to happen. Let's go ahead and preview form. And for example, if I type in here, test, any place I want, test, test. Now right now it's giving us an error because it has the formula, but you can give the example here that we can actually type inside of here. But if we want to disable that, in case, for example, 
as I mentioned before, if you want to make a pricing table, well, we don't want users to change those settings, right? So in this case, we can set this to all. We type in all and it will convert everything to read only. So users won't be able to type anything inside of these rows and columns. Now we have the properties for this. Now we have the alignment. For example, we have it left, center, or right. We can set it to center or right. That will move the table completely. In this case, we'll keep it centered, for example. We have the label. We can type in the label. For example, we could if this was a question or a title for something, we can just say title. But what if we want to disable it? Well, we just set disabled and we keep only the table, the spreadsheet. Label align, in this case, top, right, or left. In this case, we've disabled it. But if we enable it, we can set it to the right, left, and we keep it that way. If we disable it, again, it moves it like we have it, aligned center. The width, we can change the width for this if we want to change it to, for example, 300. For example, it'll make it smaller. Uh, the height, we can also change this height. We can make it required or not. In this case, we're gonna keep it no because we just want to display a sheet, for example. We have the duplicate field if we want to duplicate it. And we also have the advanced options for this. The spreadsheet name, if we want to customize it. The question text, in this case, we said title, but if we want to update it from here, that's possible also. Let's go ahead and enable, go to advanced, and we can change the title here, for example title for for this spreadsheet okay that could be an example we can change it here there's also the shrink option if we want to shrink it in case we want to put another widget or element here on the right we can unshrink it move to a new line hide field and field details for advanced options we can change this to a unique name and field id these are really useful to customize in case you want to do further automation. For example, if you want to use conditional logic, well, this helps us identify this, this widget or element. Well, that is how you use the spreadsheet widget on JotForm. We thank you all for watching and we'll see you on our next tutorials.